We already inserted the chip. Let's leave it there so we don't bend any pins. So if we want to measure with the analog inputs on the Arduino, we're going to have to somehow amplify that voltage. Now down here, I've got an INA125 amplifier chip. Now it's important that I have it lined up this way so that that dot right there and this little indent are up here. That means that this is pin 1, 2, 3, and so on, up to 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on, up to 16, 16 separate pins on this amplifier. And we know from looking at the data sheet that the power supply should go to pin 1. So I'm going to take a little red wire connector, connect from the red line over to pin 1. Also, from the data sheet, I know that pin 1 has to be connected to pin 2. Pin 2 also has to be powered in order to just enable the circuit and allow it to operate. So right now, I'm just following instructions from the data sheet. I've connected pin 1 and pin 2 to the positive rail. We haven't got power on here yet. We'll do that later. And pin 3, that's the other portion of our power supply. It's going to go to ground. So now we've connected up the power supply the way we're supposed to for the amplifier. The other pin that goes to ground is pin 12. And that's over here, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's that one. And I'll plug that into ground. So again, I'm just following the instructions on the data sheet for how to put this circuit together. So now we've provided a power supply and ground. We need to provide an appropriate reference for our amplifier. So we need to connect pins 4 and 5 together. So 4 and 5 connected together to each other. And if I want to use the 2.5 volt reference, that's going to be a reference voltage from pin 14. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That'll be our 2.5 volt reference voltage. Again, just from the data sheet. And I connect that over to pins 4 and 5. Pin 6 and 7 are going to be our inputs that are going to come from our really low voltage. So I'll get to those a little later. Pins 8 and 9, we connect a resistor across to determine what the gain of the amplifier is, how much it's going to increase the signal. So I'm going to put this 51 ohm resistor on there. Pins 10 and 11 need to be connected together, again, according to the reference on the amplifier data sheet. We'd like to make sure that we've always got a little bit of current flowing from the output. So I'm going to use this 10K resistor, 10,000 ohm resistor, connected between ground and the output pin to allow a little bit of current to flow, whatever the voltage is that the output pin comes to. So only a small amount of current, but we will have actual current flowing from the output. So now I think I've got everything set up except for the inputs into the amplifier. So let's connect the white one to pin 6 and the green one to pin 7 and see what we get. We need to make sure that we have power to drive our amplifier. So I'll connect ground over to the blue one on this side and plus 5 to the red one. And now if we look at the with the circuit powered up, we see that we're seeing a small variation on the millivolt level 
from the output of our load cell. But we've assembled the amplifier. Let's see what we're getting at the output of the amplifier. So connecting to pin 10 or pin 11. Well, it's a lot bigger than the millivolt. We're getting about 2.4 volts. And if I pull, the voltage gets larger. So changes that I had up here that were on the order of one millivolt, I now have over here, they're almost one volt in size. We've got a large increase in the voltage across this amplifier by connecting it up according to the data sheet. So when you're connecting this up, just follow the process I did, follow each step, make sure you make all of the connections. If you don't make all of the connections just right, the behavior will be a little strange. And we can check to find out if things are going okay by just walking around the inputs on the amplifier. So on pins one and two, I expect to see five volts or a little less because that's what our supply is on this Arduino. That makes sense. Pin three needs to be connected to ground. Pins four and five are connected to each other and to uh, pin 14, and they should all be about two and a half volts. So that makes sense. The input levels on pins six and seven are very close to each other, and they're both at around two and a half volts. The output level is also in the right sort of range, somewhere around two and a half volts. Pin 12 is at ground, and there's our two and a half volts on pin 14. So if your system isn't working, if the voltage that's coming out here isn't what you expect it to be, then check all of these other pins to make sure that they're providing the behavior that you expect. Now, when you assemble this circuit, you probably won't have all of these little jumper wires. You'll probably be using more of these things. So let's try seeing what it looks like if we assemble it with some of the regular jumper wires. I'll leave the resistors here, but let's go around the process and plug in all the pieces with just regular jumpers. So first off, plus five to pin one, pins one and two connected together, pin three connected to ground, pins four and five connected together, and also connected to pin 14. Pins six and seven are gonna be our input. Eight and nine are still our gain resistor. 10 and 11 are gonna be the output and we're gonna connect them together. Pin 12, we're gonna to connect to ground. And we're gonna have a load resistor on the output. So I think I remembered everything. Oh, except the inputs. So I'm gonna connect the white one back through here to pin six and the green one back through here to pin seven. And let's hope I got it right. So now I'm gonna plug back into ground and the output on pin 10 or 11, I'm getting about 2.3 volts out. And if I pull, the voltage goes up. So I'm getting an amplified output from my load cell. So that all worked. It's a lot harder to see what's going on here with all of these jumper wires crisscrossing all over each other. So if you've got your own Arduino kit, ideally, 
put in especially those wires that are going to be the same every time, power to pins 1 and 2, ground to pin 3, ground to pin 12. Make sure you've got those plugged in with short lengths of uh, uh, hookup wire so that you can more easily see if you've got some of your other connections not quite in the right place. But in this instance, by going around one step at a time and hitting all of the pins that I needed to, I got all the pieces back together and I'm getting my uh, amplification signal. So now try hooking up your own circuit.